So we've got our pipe. Daddy <laughs> Hunter Holder here. What does it take to build a do-it-yourself twin turbo kit for an LS? Let's find out. In this video, I'm going to show you what it took to build a custom twin turbo setup for an LS. And this happened basically out of necessity, you know, like for all of us, we have our single turbo setup that we normally run on the LS motors. I use the stock truck exhaust manifolds and we made a custom wide pipe. And this is normally the way that we run it. Now we have run twin turbos before, but I use the DNA stainless, you know, turbo manifolds, but I don't really like them. They burn plug wires, the plug access is no good, so I really like the stock truck manifolds. Manifolds. So now I need to do a custom twin turbo setup with the stock manifold. So I thought, you know what? Maybe you guys want to see that. They can apply some of this stuff to their own vehicle. Let's get going. First thing we got to do is take off our Y pipe. Do, 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 do. Pa! Let's go. Look how fast and easy that was. Yes, I did a little prep work beforehand. I just want to get the stock Y pipe, or not the stock Y pipe, the turbo Y pipe off that we normally run. That way I have the stock exhaust manifolds and I can start my header setup. So let's take a look at what we have and then what we need. Okay guys, the start of any good turbo setup, whether it's a single or a twin, the start of it actually comes from the wrecking yard. First of all, it is the stock exhaust manifolds like we have there and like I have here. But the important part when you're getting the motor from the wrecking yard is this right here. This is a section of tubing that always comes with this. Like in our wrecking yards, they have a big snipper and they just come in and pinch her and pinch the, the catalytic converter and drop the rest of the exhaust off because they, they need to get rid of that. We can't reuse the catalytic converters. So they ended up just cutting it off here. The nice thing is that leaves you with a section of tubing, which is two and a half, which is fine for a twin turbo setup and it leaves you with the flange. The flange that's already drilled and ready to go to bolt right onto the stock exhaust manifolds. So we're gonna remove some of these flanges and we'll start our new twin turbo kit. Okay guys, here's an important tip when you're going to get the flanges from the wrecking yard. There are actually a couple of different kinds. I'm gonna show you the photo of the one that we have on our standard Y pipe for our single turbo. You can take a look at that. That's kind of flat, it has a built-in o-ring receiver groove and that's one style and make sure that you match the right exhaust manifold with that flange if you're getting them all together that's going to work out fine but the other thing you'll find is like this is another style flange it comes with a you know a flare on it and it comes with a special gasket that you got to use now both of those can be used on the same manifold but also remember that there is a right and left side manifold and a right and left side flange that's right they made the flanges different so like look this one's kind of longer this one's more triangular. You're gonna see that, so make sure to match the right one with the right manifold when you're doing your turbo kit. Let's get going. So to get things started, the first thing I did was take our flange with our section of tubing on it and I cut it. Now I cut it so it's perfectly straight. You can kind of see there. We cut off this is the piece that gets pinched, as I said, from the wrecking yard. And you notice I cut it on this side, on the flange side of the O2 sensor. I'm not using an O2 sensor on this section of tubing. We'll use it after the turbo, so this wasn't a big deal. But what I wanted to do, loud. What I wanted to do is cut this and just make it straight so I could bolt this onto the exhaust manifold and then see where the rest of the tubing needs to go. We're just kind of doing a point in space kind of thing. We're going, it's going to kind of go here and kind of go here. We'll get everything going and made and then we'll adapt our turbos to the intercooler and all the other stuff that we need. So we need to kind of do this one at a time. But think about that while you're doing it because if you're doing it in a car, obviously, there are space constraints. <laughs> you have to make sure that all of this stuff is going to fit. We've got lots of real estate up front here, so I can be off by an inch or two or a foot. <laughs> it's not a big deal. But we're going to start out with our flange and mount that to the exhaust manifold and... Okay, I'll go down here. So we've got our flange in place. Make sure you guys are looking at that. See, we've got our flange just, I just have a finger tight right now. What I'm trying to do is I'm just gonna take a look and see where everything needs to go. Kind of eyeball it and then we'll go. Okay, now that we have our flange mounted, 
we're gonna have to have something like this. It's gonna have a flange for the turbo, it's gonna have a provision for some kind of wastegate, and then it's going to mount and probably be welded on something like this. We're gonna mount our turbo. Here's some things to think about. You need to make sure that the turbo is high enough to where you actually have drain back. And the other thing we're doing is because I wanna run a bunch of different turbos, I'm gonna run mine with a V-band flange so we can mount different things. But again, remember, height. It's gotta be high enough to drain back, and if you wanna run different kinds of turbos, you may want a different kind of flange. To get the pieces of tubing I needed to make this kit, I went down and got a bin for my local wrecking yard. I had them do it. I had them swedge this out to a three inch so I could use a V-band. And this is a two and a half inch pipe. Now, the ideal thing would have be to have a mandrel bin, but I don't have time to do that <laughs> and I didn't prep ahead of time, so I'm using this. Now what I'm going to do is attach this to this. This is a piece I already have from the twin turbo kit that we run with the stainless, the stainless tubular manifolds, so I'm going to make all of this work. But now this has to attach to this, but before I can do that, I have to get it at the right angle because right now that's not going to work. It needs to be more like this and then this piece can go like this to mount the turbo correctly. So now I gotta make all that happen. So now what I've done is taken my piece of tubing that I got from the muffler shop and I've cut it and <laughs> down to this size. So you can see it's much smaller now. But the other thing to notice is, take a look at this. This is an angle cut that's gonna put this at the right angle. I want this kind of parallel with the ground-ish. It's not really critical. I just wanna make sure that the turbo's mounted correctly. So what I can do is I can mount that like this and then this will kind of be at the right angle, then I can mount my other tube to it. But notice, this is going to go, this is going to go onto this at an angle. It's not ideal for flow, and there are better ways to do it if we had more bends. You know, there's a better way to do it for flow, but you're not asking it to flow a whole bunch. We're doing a twin turbo setup and not a single turbo setup. I don't really think it's going to make much difference. We're only running little GT35s on it. This will probably work. I will probably redo this with better bends and <laughs> Maybe a little bit nicer welding also when I'm done, but let's get going and see if we can make our turbo kit. Okay, I'm back in the welding area. Now what we need to do is take our piece of tubing. We have that swedged up to three inches. We have a three inch V-band flange. So now I do need to make this go on here. And then on the other side, our little angle here, we need to weld this to that. Let's get going. just tack it in place and then find out how it does then seam weld everything when it's done yeah by no means if I'm a welder but look at that yeah nice so we now have our piece we go check it out and see if it works if it goes on and then finish welding so we've installed our section of tubing onto our exhaust manifold it looks like it's going to be oriented correctly all that looks like it's okay so we're going to go ahead and mount the rest of it and mock it up and see if it's going to be in the right position and then I can seam weld it permanently. So as you can see, we have a T4 to T3 adapter flange because this is a small little GT35. So there we have it. That looks like it, that is all going to fit. Um, it's levered out there quite a bit. Obviously, I would put a brace on it if we were running it somewhere. But for the dyno, it should be fine. We probably will put the wastegates right here. We'd also have a provision for it, two of the turbo cement wastegates. This should work out good. We've got room to route our exhaust, another three inch V-band, and a three inch exit. We have some of those already. I'll go ahead and show you that when it's all done. See wheel first, then do the other side. What I like to do, because I knew I was going to be shortening this, I made a practice cut kind of to see if I got the angle right. So what I do is hold this up and see if the angle is right, then all I have to do is bring that angle down here, because I want to get rid of a bunch of this length. That makes the turbo too low. So let's see how our cut did. So 
So it looks like our angle looks like our angle should work pretty well. So now all I got to do is cut that same angle just down here, and we're in business. So we've got our pipe, got our angle cut. This is ready for the V-band. So we'll mock it up. Seems like it's fairly even with the other side, so we'll go ahead and tack weld it up, give it a shot. So we've got our two elbows mounted. So I'll put our turbo elbow mounts for our waist skates and stuff, put those on. See how okay, it's, it's not exactly Nelson Racing uh, symmetrical, but they're close enough. All we gotta do is mount the turbos on there, get started. We'll see if the exhaust works out, get the uh, waste skates mounted, and then we can work on the intercooler. That's one. So why will I spend an hour or two fabricating a piece that I already have rather than drive over my storage and pick it up? Who's with me? I'm not leaving. Okay guys, here we go. We got the other turbo mounted on this side. Look at that. Tom Nelson, where are you at? Symmetrical turbo. So check it out. Got the exhaust mounted. Please take a little flange, an adapter flange, it's a four bolt to a V-band. Now we just have to orient this and get the, uh, see we've got our feed upside down. We get the oil feed to the right side, get the drain. This one's oriented properly here. Get our waste gates on, we gotta take them off of here. Get them on here. Once we got that, we got to split the oil feed line, which is, we're running oil feed line from that right down there. So we'll split that to these two fittings. Got drain fittings. This is our drain fitting was for our single turbo. And since I don't have a, an oil drain hole over on this side of the pan, but I do have two of them over on this side of the pan, what I might do is just wire them together and have them feed into one. I could run them maybe both over to two. You know, we'll see what happens. Lots more stuff to do. Let's get it going. Okay, I think we figured out kind of a position for our intercooler. We've got our two turbos mounted. We got reducers, silicone reducers. We're gonna put on the tubes and then see if we can mount the intercooler and then get the discharge from the intercooler into the throttle body. Now we're trying to push the intercooler over the place. It's kind of heavy. Ta-da! Now we gotta get the discharge tube from here up into that throttle body. We got a little bit of an angle and stuff to work with, so we're gonna find out if we can do it. Okay guys, I think we've figured out the discharge tube. We've got this elbow which we're using on the single turbo deal. Already has the blow off valve on it and it even has our charge temperature probe. So we'll get this in here. section here. So success! I was able to get the discharge tube up there and run the tubes from the turbos down to the intercooler all without having to cut one single tube. 
that's awesome. Now we need to hook up the water lines going to and from the intercooler, and then the oil feed lines to the turbos, and the return line. We're getting close. As you guys can see, we got some more stuff done. We've got our intercooler lines. So we've got a feed over here. This is our water feed. Splits into a Y. Down there, feeds two of these, two of them are in, and then two of them are out. They come over here, and the out just goes back into the dyno tank. But in looking at this, <laughs> This is woefully inadequate. There's not nearly enough flow, even with two lines going in, two lines going out. These fitting sizes need to be a lot bigger. The feed line needs to be a lot bigger. The way I'm T, the T's I'm using are too small. I mean, everything about it. For the big bang motor, they're all way too small. For these, for these little GT35s, this combination should work fine. We've got our discharge tube. We have all of our vacuum and boost lines hooked up to our boost controller. Got exhaust on on both sides. Waste gates are hooked up. Got the charge temperature. That's all hooked up. The one thing I don't have right now is back pressure, which I am going to have for the next video. But, you know, I couldn't leave you guys after seeing installation of our complete twin turbo kit. Couldn't leave you guys without at least making a run, right? So everything looks like it's ready. I think the only thing left to do is start this thing up. We gotta make at least one pull, right? Find out if our twin turbo kit is actually working. Okay guys, fingers crossed. We're gonna do our first startup and if everything's okay, we'll make some runs. Right after I fix this leak. Day. We got to build, install, and dyno test our twin turbo setup on the 4.8 liter LS motor. Now I have a full day of dyno testing tomorrow because we're going to compare the twin turbo sub to the single turbo sub. But before I can do that, I need to drill and tap the exhaust on this twin turbo setup so we can monitor back pressure. That way we can compare boost pressure, back pressure, horsepower, and torque of the twin turbo setup to a single turbo setup. And I might also have a set of mystery twin turbos to compare to these. Our mature older guys, make sure to like, share, subscribe, ring the bell, do all that stuff. Obviously more twin turbo 4.8 liter testing coming up.